here, this one, this problem here on the back, because most of you missed this one. Only a couple of you got this one right. Um, this one where you're supposed to change, what was it, 7 twelfths? Something. 7 twelfths as a percent and a decimal. Let me just give you the straight up what you need. You mean you did like one part of it, you left that one point that probably won't change your grade, but it was Feel free. <laughs> Uh, so you show exactly how much effort you put into it. Uh, this one here, problem number 13. And if you'd rather not be doing this, you can call them home and talk to them yourself. Uh, this is the only thing I would do, people. You are just going to divide this out. You're supposed to write it as a percent and as a decimal. The first thing I would do is write it as a percent because what happens is this. You're dividing 12 into 7. Okay, you are going to put a decimal there, but because a percent is moving the decimal two places, you're going to think about this without the decimal first. How many times? I'm sorry. No decimal. Well, let's put the decimal there. How many times will 12 go into 70? Well, 6 times would be 72, so that's too big. So 5, that's 60. How many times will 12 go into 100? 8, 96. This right here is your beginning of your percent. It's going to be 58, but it's not exactly 58 because there's going to be something left over. What's left over? 4. When you get after that second point of the decimal, you make a fraction out of what's left. It's 58 and 4 twelfths percent which reduces down to one-third of a percent. So there's your percent. Now the decimal, to get to the decimal, you just keep going with this division thing. How many times will 12 go into 40? Three times. And you just keep getting threes. So the decimal is 0 0.583 repeater. Some of you, put, I don't know where some of you got one-fourth there. Some of you got, I don't know the number you got there, but okay. You can't just take this 3 and put it over there. It has to be what fraction is that repeated 3, which is 1 third. Some of you got 2 thirds. I don't know where that came from. Okay, but that, that, that one to me is not, should not be terribly difficult for you. I guarantee it'll be kind of along those same lines. Now, after that, I will entertain any other questions here of your own choice. Mitch? The speedometer on the Leona's car shows the speed both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Using 1.6 as the equivalent for one mile, find the miles per hour rate that is equivalent to 40 kilometers per hour. I would write down my equal ratio slash fraction slash conversion thing. You know that 1.6 kilometers equals one mile, right, Mitch? Yeah. First of all, did you just take any notes or staple any notes on the back here? No. Okay. Yeah, nothing. All right, so here is your, this is your conversion ratio slash fraction. You are taking this, you're taking 40, You're taking this, you're taking what you're given, 40 kilometers, putting it over 1, and I'm multiplying it by this fraction. What has to go on the bottom? What label? Because labels, we're looking at crossing off labels when you use conversion fractions. Oops. Kilometers. So the 1.6 goes on the bottom, the miles go on top. And to solve this problem, you are just going to divide 1.6 into 40. 1.6 into 40. Move the decimal, add the decimal, it's 16 into 400, which is what? 2 is 32, and 16 goes into 80 five times. You did what? 
I want to find out. Did your notes that you wrote to yourself tell you to do that? Because I did this problem on the pre test and I would have done a division problem as well. Your notes didn't tell you to do that? Oh, that's right, you didn't have any notes. Cole, quit! Let's um, change color. Which one? Number 12. Number 12, says Cameron. Number 12. Yeah, we talked about this one. Yeah. Measure of angle B is 59 degrees. What's your question on that? What was the deal? This is for everybody. If it's a parallelogram, what do you know about the angles? Once you know one, you know them all. Why, Lainey Kabarik? Opposite angles are? D and B, B and B are opposite angles. What do you know about them? They're the same. They're equal. If B is 59 degrees, then D is 59 degrees. What do we know about what we call adjacent angles, which means angles that are right next to each other? Angle B and angle, that big angle A. I remember talking about this in the pre-test. Tyler McCoy, what do I know about adjacent angles? Yeah, that ate up to 880 degrees. I don't know how you can miss this problem. 59 plus what number is 180? Well, 180 minus 59. 120 degrees would be DAB. Angle DKB, that big angle there, has to be 121 degrees. Somebody that didn't get 121 degrees, what did you do that you didn't get 121? Angle just, angle D, A, B. Again, something you could leave notes for yourself. Well, just will be probably the same thing, just with different numbers. I can't really make this much easier. Short of actually giving you the answers and saying, here's multiple choice. So these where they belong. Josh? Number three. Number three? Yeah. Vertical yardstick to cast the shadow. What do you have to do for this one, James? Shoot. Draw some pictures. Did you take off pictures? Yes. All right. And again, this, I remember talking about this. Here's my yardstick. It cast, it cast a 24-inch shadow. How high is my yardstick? And you can't use one yard because that's a different measurement than this. One yard is how many inches? Thirty-six. There would be another note to myself. Change yard in units, but I'm sure tomorrow's test is going to say the same thing. So there's my one triangle. It is going to be a similar triangle to the other one. That is the flagpole that casts the shadow eighteen feet. And they want to know what this height is. So I'm going to do what? I'm just going to make an, a ratio box. And I would label it this exact way. What are you comparing? You've got the big triangle. I'm oh, sorry. I'll do the small one first. You've got small triangle, and you've got big triangle. You've got the height of it, and you've got its shadow. Small triangle height is 36. Small triangle shadow is 24. Big triangle height, you don't know. Big triangle shadow is 18. So you need to solve this ratio box however you want to do it. Let's change colors. You have 36 over 24 equals x over 18. The easiest way to do that, Cameron Colkin, would be to do what? Um, Reduce yeah. what? Yeah. What number goes into 36 and 24? 12. 12. So this is 3. That divided by 12 is 2. And then you can just go, oh, 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 9 is 27 feet tall. Oh. What's that? Problem number 4, since I'm looking at it. Tax and tip is always, you are just going to multiply this times that. 
I suppose the problem might be is what is 7.5% as a decimal? 7.5% with the decimal two places, it's 0 0.07. What comes after that 7? A 5. Because 5 is 1 half. 0.5 is 1 half. I'm just going to multiply that by 156. I won't do that because I'm sure you can do that. I do so hope you do a little better tomorrow night. Yes. Jaden, shoot! 17. 17. 17. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't know. This one to me shouldn't have been as difficult. Anybody? 17. First thing I do is what? What is my problem on 17? Grace, Christ, 17, what do I have to do? What's that? Yeah, how do I get this to be a positive 1 exponent? Grace. Now, all you have to do is flip the fraction. You just take this and flip it over and make it three fourths, and that makes it to the positive first power, which is the same as just three fourths. Anything to one power is itself. So now you have four thirds minus three fourths, and I'm, a lot of people went wrong. There. I'm not sure what, how hard this is. This is like fifth grade math. Four thirds minus three fourths. What do you have to do? Common denominators, 4 times 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4, 4 times 4 is 16. What is 16 twelfths minus 9 twelfths? 7 twelfths. 7 twelfths. Well, it'll be just like that. Make sure you write them up and down. Change the common denominators. Sure. While we're on this, many of you didn't get this one either. I'm not sure, sure what they're doing with that. By the way, again, if it's given in scientific notation, your answer should be in scientific notation. You should get something times 10 to some power here. How do you do multiplication in scientific notation? Step number one, multiply the lefts together. What is 4 times 4? Write down the times 10 because it's still in scientific notation. When I multiply the rights together, which is my next step, what is 10 to the negative 2 power times 10 to the negative 3 power? That is always the toughest part of this. What is 10 to the negative 2 times 10 to the negative 3? Danny? It is. Why is that? Because when you multiply bases that have exponent like bases together with exponents, you add the exponents together. And note to self, I'm adding these two together, not multiplying them. For the same reason when you had on That is an incorrect answer. Why, Aubrey? Wrong. In scientific notation, you can. That's the only time you're allowed to keep them. Why is this answer not correct? Note to self. Isabel? Because it's right. You're not allowed to have a big number like this on your left number. It has to be between 1 and 10. It's an easy fix. You just take the decimal from where it started, move it so that it is between 1 and 10, and you now 1.6. Then you have to, because you change this, you have to adjust this number. You made this, if you make this smaller, which I did, I have to make this bigger. And negative 5 plus 1, I move it one smaller, I make that one bigger, it is a negative 4. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 4th power. Do you like John? 5. I mean 8. 5 or 8. Or is that over here? You just saw it. You ate five. You just saw it. I did five. What? I said eight. Oh. Okay. You said eight times five or five then eight? Five to eight. Eight 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 to e
Writing the equation in slope-intercept form. In slope-intercept form, the generic, without any numbers, form of slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b. You need to figure out what the letter m is and what the letter b is. The easiest point is finding out what the letter b is. How do I know what the letter b is? Drew Norquist. How do I know what the letter B is? It's called slope-intercept form for a reason. The letter B is the intercept part of that. So where is the intercept, Drew Norquist? Would it be helpful if it said slope y-intercept? It is. It crosses the y-axis at 1. That's what this number is. So you put a 1 there. Now all you have to do is find the slope of the line. So you just need to make a triangle using some points. Well, we already got this one. That's one point, And I would go ahead and use this one. You could use that one as well. Make a right triangle out of it. How high is that triangle? Two units high. How wide is that triangle? Only one unit wide. There's my slope. You must check to see if it's positive or negative slope. Is it positive? Is it going uphill or is it going downhill? Grace Christ, it is positive because left to right uphill is positive, downhill is negative. So y equals positive. You don't have to leave this in fraction form. You can just write it in y equals 2x plus 1. I would give it to you if it's in fraction form, but that would be the general way it goes. Wait, why is it 2x? Because 2 over 1 is 2. I could give you 6 over 1 dollars, but that would be the same as 6 dollars, so I should say it was 6 over 1. Oh, I feel so much better about this already. JD? Number 11. Number 6, grade line 7, and to get hard. What's more hard? Oh, what is the area of triangle ABC? Well, the first thing Jenna I write down is my formula for area of triangle, which is? Jenna? Mm -hmm. One half base times height. And what is my base and what is my height? They have to be the two lines that are perpendicular. So you got to go and look up here and find the right angle, which happens to be right here. Here is my height. And the line that it's perpendicular to, which is this, is my base. So it is one half of 10 times 6. Half of 60 is 30. So the area of my triangle is 30, whatever that is, feet squared. What did you put down, Jenna? These two lines are not right angles. You have to go with the form of right angles there. The area of the parallelogram is the same thing for those of you that missed that one. The area of a parallelogram is just base times height, and they also have to be perpendicular which means it's going to be 6 times 10. It is not hard math in my world. It is 60 feet squared, which makes sense because the triangle that we found the area takes up half the area of the whole thing. The whole thing was 30, half of it, well, the whole thing was 60, and half of it was 30. This math is pretty simple, relatively speaking. Maddie Rock. Number 15. Oh, my favorite of all time. Maddie, what's 1 to the third power? What's that? 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 to the second power? times 2 is 4. 3 to the first power, what's that? 3. And 4 to the 0 power, 
anything with zero power is one. So those are the simplification of those terms. One plus four is five, plus three is eight, minus one is seven. The length of the diagonal of a rectangle that is 30 centimeters long and 16 centimeters wide, which I'm sure everybody drew. Our twist. A rectangle that's 30 centimeters long and 16 centimeters wide. Well, I think we talked about this. You have to think about that. Um, the only way to find that out is hopefully that's a right triangle, which it is because a rectangle is made up of all right triangles, of all right angles. So you forget about this and make this a triangle, and you hope this is a Pythagorean triple. Otherwise, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem, which nobody wants to do. So you look over here. Is there a 1630? No. So then your next thing is, well, let's hope that I can shrink this triangle down and find a Pythagorean triple in there. Well, what, what common factor does 16 and 30 have? Yeah, you can cut them both in half. When you cut them both in half, you end up with an 8-15 triangle. Is there an 8-15? Yeah, there sure is. What is the diagonal of an 8-15? 17, but 17 is not my answer. That's the small reduced form. You know, to get the answer to the big one, you have to do the opposite of what you did to get to the small one. I divided this by 2, so to get to the big one, I got to multiply by 2. So 17 times 2 would be 34. 34 centimeters. Mitch, 16. Number 16. Ah, uh, I was wondering what would be the latest one. Anybody first step on number 16? Isabel? Bring the negative down. All right. Make all, find all the negative exponents and make them positive because we don't do well with negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this. The only one that needs to be changed is the negative 1 needs to go to the bottom. And I'll rewrite the whole thing. 6, y, x to the fifth, y, over, and I'm moving the x down. Let's put it at the end. Now, somebody, because there's different ways you can do this. Isabel, what would you do now? Or what did you do? Okay, so you put the y's together. Y times y is y squared. And there's an x to the fifth up there. And then you can put the x's together on the bottom, so it's 3x cubed y, right? And then, Isabel, Well, you have to think about this like this. y squared means you have y times y. You have one y on bottom that's going to cross off with only one of those y's on top. So you're left with a y on top. This on top, you have five x's. And on the bottom, you have three x's. So three of the bottom ones are going to cross off with three of the top ones, and you're going to be left with an x squared on top, two x's. So what's left on top is a 6, a y, and an x squared. What's left on the bottom? A 3, but this 3 can cross off with that 6. What is 3 and 6? 2. So everything on the bottom actually crossed off, and you're left with 2x squared y or 2y x squared on top. 2x squared y.
You can just write letters, we write them alphabetically. It doesn't matter. But you get across the three off with the six right away in about two. And then you get across this y off with that y right away. Move all these x's up. Wait, is it x3 or x2? X2. Uh oh, Mrs. Smiley. Oh, it's right here. Did I not give you one? Well, there's something wrong. Yeah. Everybody get one wrong that I marked? No, you gave me the wrong answer. Not again. Yeah. Poor Mrs. Smiley. Thank you, ma'am. I don't understand. Which part? Flipping, like what happened to 6x to the negative 1? This negative one, you make it, you don't deal with negative exponents, you have to make that a positive one. You can do that just by moving the x to the bottom. Like, but you leave the six on top? Yes, six is six doesn't move because it doesn't have a negative exponent. So now it's like six y. It becomes six y x five y. Six y x five y. So now there's six y's. Well you don't think about it as being six y's, there's only two y's. Technically, there's six x to the fifth y's added together, but you're thinking multiplication. You're getting multiplication and addition mixed up. I wouldn't think about. It. You don't need to think about that at all. You're just going to all multiplication. You can cross cancel things that you cross cancel. You get multiplication and addition kind of mixed up, which is easy to do. So, Amy. Nineteen. Lucky number nineteen. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this one on the pretest too. Remember, your ultimate goal here is to get the letter X by itself, correct? So in order to do that, you have to get rid of this, and you have to get rid of this, which is in front of the X. So which one do you do first? Nope. The last step is always you get rid of the thing that's next to the X, because that's multiplication and division. You have to get rid of the addition, subtraction stuff. And I remember telling you this, if this messes you up, usually when they write equations down, they put the term that has the letter first. So if it helps you to think about it this way, make 0.2x first plus 0.7 equals 1.3. Because usually this term comes first. So what's the first thing you get rid of here is that 0.7. Which means you do the opposite of adding 0.7 is subtracting 0.7. Subtract 0.7 from that, you end up with 0.6, and then you're left with this. And then the thing to get rid of is the stuff in front of the x, and you do that by division. If you divide 0 0.7, 0 0.2 divided into 0.6, move it one place, move it one place, you end up with a 3. So maybe my note to self would be to move that, put that first, flip flop those places there because of the commutative property of addition, which says order doesn't matter when you add, you can move this one over there and that one over there. Everybody's happy. And if you're curious about number 20, it's done the same way we just did that. Get rid of this first because it doesn't have the x, subtract two thirds. Flip and multiply by that last one. Okay, question? Jenna Durvis? Number one. Number one. Number one. Alright. Number one you should do as a percent box. It's not a percent increase or decrease, it's just a, you're breaking something up into percents. What things am I breaking up into percents? I'm talking about parts and labor. So the parts plus the labor gives me my total bill. You with me now? All right. Do I know my percentages on any of those? Well, I know one. I know the total percent has to be what? Right. So I know this percent has to be 100. I don't know either of those. What is my actual dollar cost? Do I know how much my parts are? Which is? 
but I know how much my labor is. And I can figure that out because I know the total bill is 120. How much does labor have to be? 120 minus 48? Jayden? 72. 72. Yeah, that's all just subtraction. So they just want what the percent for labor is. So this is the box you're looking for, percent for labor. Don't need the parts part. You just make equal fractions with this. What number over 100 equals 72 over 120? And what's the easiest way to do that one, Jayden? What would you do? Just do it out like it is. 100 times 72 divided by 120? Yeah. You could. I would reduce it so you can make the numbers easier to work with. Cut both of these in half, it's 36 over what? 60? Divide them both by 6. 6 over 10. And then if you find something like this, 10 does go into 100, 10 times 10. So 6 times 10 is 60% is labor, 40% is parts. Sorry, Kim. Problem number two, I would get the idea for um, the mean one. Well, I would have to say if you got the mean wrong, did you add them up and divide by five? Yeah. And I guess you added incorrectly or divided incorrectly. Let's, let me ask this. Who got it right? What did you get when you added all of them together, Tyler McCoy? Oh, I have Somebody have the addition? Manny, what did you get? 4, 8, 1.5. Did you get that when you added them all together? So, I mean, that's... You, you did the process right. It was just... Everybody else, you got this right, right? Manny, when you divided that by 5? Divided by 5, you get 9 is 45. 31 and 6, and then 15, and then 6.3. Did you get the median part right, though? Yes. Order them, middle. Cobar. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. The coin is tossed, the number coin is rolled. What is the probability of getting a tail and rolling a 2? Probability of a tail and getting a two. How do you find that probability out, Lady Kabarak? Not adding fractions. Probabilities of two different things happening are multiplying fractions. You need to take the probability of getting a tail and multiply it by your probability of rolling a two. When you multiply them together, that's the probability. You could draw all of the sample space and try to figure it out, but this would be... What is your probability of flipping a coin and getting a tail? One out of every two, right? There's two sides to a coin, one of the tail. When you roll a dice, what's your probability of getting a two? You can either get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. That's all your choices are. How many twos are there? Out of how many total choices? Six. The probability of both of those happening is what you get when you multiply them together. It's one twelve. One out of twelve times you will get. Did you add them together? Yeah. Well, that would be a note I would make to myself. Oh. Yeah, don't make notes on this one. Because I'll let you have a piece of note paper now. I won't let you take the pre-test as your notes or the test as your notes. Those can't be your notes, but some of them could be on that. Some of them don't. Kate! Number seven. Number seven. These get done just like equations. Kate, how do I solve that for x? 
How do I get the letter X by itself? How do I get rid of these plusing one? Well, that would give me a plus two then. One plus one is two. How do I get rid of a plus one? Subtract one. It's an equation. You do the opposite. Subtract one, subtract one. This goes away. Now x is greater than three minus one is two. And then to graph it, just put the two under there. Is it an open circle or a closed circle? Open. Why is it open? Because there's no equal sign. And it's all the numbers that are greater than 2, so it goes in this direction. Inequalities, which is what this is, is solved the same way that equations are. You get the letter x by itself by doing the opposite. If this would have been a minus 1, then I would add 1. Drew? How do you know if it's an open circle or a closed circle? Because you can't see the inside of the circle. If it is just this, it's an open circle. If that has an equal sign under it, it is closed. Because equal sign means can equal. Open circle means it starts at 2 but doesn't include 2. Because 2, is 2 bigger than 2? No. So 2 is not my answer. But anything that's even the slightest bit to the right of 2 would be my answer. 2.1, 2.5, 2 and 1 32nd. Those would all work. Open circle tells you it starts at 2, but does not include 2. Mitch, so you can just look at like the direction that is and really find out what the answer is. Like the direction is a little... I don't know what that means, but... This here tells you which way your arrow is. Yeah. Is that a... It doesn't tell you the answer, because you have to figure out what number it starts at. You have to subtract one so you can know that that's a 2. Aubrey! Number 12. 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 Number and angles that are adjacent or touch each other are what we call supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. So here, for example, Aubrey, if I have this, and I know that this is 35 degrees, this angle is 35 degrees, these two angles have to be what number added to 35 gives me 180. So this would have to be what? 145 degrees, and this would have to be 145 degrees. Opposite angles are equal. Adjacent angles add up to 180 degrees. So, what we call supplementary? Yes, so I know. Did I add something wrong? Even when people smirk at me like that, I don't think I did something incorrect. Pam! No, number 10, the answer was 60. The area of the parallelogram is base times height. 6 times 10 is 60. Here. Right here. No, where's the where? This was because I did the one underneath, which was the area of a triangle. This one's the other triangle. Those of you just coming in for band, we spent today reviewing our test because we're taking it over again tomorrow. Well, it's going to be a different one. I will put this video, send this video to your parents if you want to. Or you need to study. I'll throw this video to your parents and email if you want to watch the whole thing over again. Any other ones before we go? Uh, we have about three minutes here. Which one did we do? Didn't do the volume of a box. How do you find volume of a rectangle prism? Like times with times like. You multiply the three numbers together. If you got that one wrong, you're struggling. Um, 
I think that's just about it. I'm about ready to stop. I did not do problem number 20. Do you want me to do it or do you think you kind of got a handle on it? You know, the notes to self on problem number 20 is flip and multiply at the end. It's about the same way the one before it is. You subtract two thirds. Change the common denominators, which is what? Six ninths, eight ninths, six ninths is two ninths. We talked about this numerous times. How do I get rid of a fraction in front of a letter? Can we cope with you? And multiply. Times nine fifths, times nine fifths, those cross off. Put up with just you can give that back to me tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll leave him. If you don't want to try it for my gun run, what's the perfection in here? Where is the yeah, personal I'm satisfaction? Sure. Wait, Isabel. Um, can we use the same notes that we had? Sure. No, you can use the same one here. You just can't use your, either of the two tests. Right? So we have to take the test over again? You don't have to if you're happy with what you have. There's no have to. I'm not going to force you.